Okay, welcome to Space Invaders tutorial part six. Okay, in our last uh, installment, we were able to have an enemy on the screen, just one, and we had a weapon that we could use to fire, and in theory, okay, and we could fire and destroy our enemy and return the enemy back to the start. So. Um, game's pretty boring. We've only got one enemy, so let's add multiple enemies. So to do this, we're going to use a Python feature called lists. So list is just a list of things. Um, so let's uh, do that here. So first thing we want to do is choose the number of enemies that we want to do. So, so I'm going to say number of enemies equals five. Then we need to actually create an empty list of enemies. Now, um, notice because it is a list, I'm definitely going to use a plural noun to describe it. And when we start it, we're having an empty list. Okay, there's nothing in the list. So lists are kind of delineated or denoted by brackets, not parentheses, not uh, curly braces. So now we need to add enemies to the list. And by enemies, in this case, we mean actual turtle objects. So for i in range, so we're going to use a loop. So we're going to actually, oops, actually I should put this down here somewhere. Kind of the wrong order, sorry about that. So what we're going to do is enemy, actually we're going to go enemies.append So we're going to create the turtle or create the enemies here. Okay, so turtle dot turtle. So we're using the append method of the list data type, and we're appending a turtle. So instead of creating one, we're adding or appending one to our list. What this lets us do is use Python lists. to iterate through and set the attributes and it's basically set them up. Okay, So we have an empty list. We've appended it five times because the number of enemies is five. So our list contains five turtles. Then for in this loop, if you've done other programming languages, uh, this is maybe kind of, you might be working off from calling this a for each loop, but in Python it's just a regular for loop. So for enemy and enemies, so for each of the enemy turtles, we're going to change the color, shape, speed, and position. So let's try that out and see what happens. OK, so I see one turtle moving. I got two. Okay. So after thinking, basically what's happened is they're all on top of each other. So there's actually four here. You just can't see them. So what we need to do is Instead of starting them out at the same place, we're going to start them out at a random position. So we're going to use the random module. And down here, we're going to say x equals rand int. That's random dot rand int. We want it from minus 200 to 200. So basically, that'll start at a random spot from minus 200 to 200. And y equals random dot rand int. And for this one, we'll say 100 to 250. We don't want it to start down here, like right next to the player. That wouldn't be very fair. So what this will do is start each turtle, each enemy, at a different spot. So let's test that out. OK, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Notice only one's moving. Collision only works with the moving one. Well, trust me, it still works. Um, so what we need to do is go down to our main game loop. Now that we've created all those turtles, 
And in here, we need to do the exact same thing. So for enemy in enemies. So we need to do the same thing with all of them. So again, it's a loop. So it goes through the first enemy, boom, does all that. Goes through the second enemy, third enemy, fourth enemy, etc., etc. So let's run it. Okay. That must have been the first one. If I were a little better at this, I would be able to demonstrate what I'm trying to demonstrate, which is that the collisions don't work for all of them yet. Okay. So inside this loop, we're actually iterating through all of the enemies lists. Okay. So, but this part, the collision checking part, is not in there. So I'm going to just cut that. Move it to there. And then indent it. Okay, so we've got enemy here, we've got enemy there. So what's going to happen is during the main loop, it will iterate through all of the enemies, check for collisions, check for collisions with the player, finish that, then come out and talk about and check the bullet to make sure the bullet's working. Okay, so we've got five. Okay, great. Okay, so you notice every time I hit one, doesn't matter which one, they all work now. It goes back to that starting point. Um, so what I would do with this, personally, is I would use my random thing again. It says enemy set position. Let's just go ahead and copy that code since we've already done it. From up there. And then so when the enemy has been destroyed, it will go back to a random spot. You gotta make sure all of our indenting is the same. Okay, so let's run it. Okay, you see how it just moved to some weird spot? Missed that one. Okay, so it's a little bit more challenging, I suppose. Okay. But basically, you can see by using lists and loops, we didn't really have to change our code all that much, okay? Because we, we set our code up first originally to work for just one enemy, and then by using loops and lists, we were able to use the exact same code and make it very clean and easy to read. So we understand for enemy in enemy. So it'll loop through all of the enemies and do all these things. Move it, check for collisions, check for, you know, do boundary checking and all those sorts of things. Okay, that's that.